¿Cómo puedes ver? Me siento que mi habilidad de hablar es, es mucho mejor que en el pasado. This is Novian, a Spanish learner who has racked up 1,200 hours of study in three years, an impressive show of dedication. He's also documented his journey through update videos and a spreadsheet. Today, we'll find out his methods of learning, the other language I didn't expect him to know, and how good his Spanish really is through a conversation in Spanish as well. How's it going, everybody? My name is Novian. I've been learning Spanish for three years, and before that, I was before Spanish. I was learning Esperanto for three years, and yeah, um, I tried to learn Spanish like three or four times in the past and failed every time. But then I think the third or fourth time, which was the last time I finally managed to learn it. Wait, you said, so you, you learned Esperanto before Spanish? Mm -hmm. Esperanto is my first language. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know people actually learned that. Yeah, yeah, I'm like C1 in Esperanto. I'm like, my Esperanto is way better. Actually? Huh? For, for real? For real. <laughs> it's like way better than my Spanish, yeah. I wouldn't say way better. It's been, they're more, it's, my Spanish is within striking distance of my Esperanto. But my Esperanto, I'm way more fluent in like, you know, in Esperanto. But I, I didn't realize. I thought that was just like a meetup language that people just dabbled with. But like, you actually got fluent in it. Oh, yeah, very, I mean, I still like I was just talking with um a bunch of dudes. Uh, we were just speaking as pronoun like last night. Um, I got some. I got a, quite a few friends. It, now you now you're getting into the 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 refill podcast uh, topic. Yeah, this <laughs> was like, the... <laughs> this was supposed to be a Spanish video, not an Esperanto video. I mean, look, you. I'm not. I'm definitely. Uh, I love talking about Esperanto uh, more so than yeah. Spanish, but you know, so it, it is what it is. If you want to get into that, we can get into that. We, we can we can talk about both. Um, okay. First, probably just do Spanish and then, then Esperanto. So you said that um, you learned, you tried learning Spanish for a couple times before. So what was what was like your first contact with the language and what was your experience with it like? First contact with like trying to learn it or because I live in Texas and so it's very common hearing uh, Spanish in my day to day. Um, I was always fascinated with like those just huge population of city that speaks a gibberish to me as like a little kid so i was always super fascinated about that but then my first contact with actually like all right i'm going to learn spanish i'm so excited was when i signed up for spanish in high school and i was actually excited i was like like yes you know i know i want to learn spanish finally i guess you know I can, uh, I want to learn and see what's going on, you know, finally get to the point where I can actually speak with all these people that I run into that don't speak English that well. Um, and then cold, like reality hit me like a, like a bucket of cold water. And was just like, this class is just, what well, I was like, this class is super boring. Like, this is, this is, if this is what it takes to learn Spanish, I don't want to do it. And so I equated the class, high school class, uh, room Spanish experience with, the language and therefore i got i kind of like just abandoned it to that extent that was like the first time i ran into it so that was um was that this uh freshman year or yeah like freshman sophomore year one of the two yeah that, that was like my experience with it too where i i learned it for well i signed up for um high school span high school spanish but i didn't really learn anything um and mm -hmm. actually in my final year of high school my Spanish was so bad. Um, my teacher asked me to conjugate saber, and I said yo sabo. Yo, yo sabo, <laughs> kid. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's how bad my Spanish was. But but after that, I got interested in it. So interesting. Yeah. I don't even remember. Like I think my Spanish teacher was so lax that I don't even remember having to, like, I think I just copied off of other kids. So I was like, I'm I'm over, I'm done. <laughs> like I'm, I'm over this because you know I think my Spanish teacher. He was really cool. Like, the, if you showed interest in Spanish, he was going to grade you on a different set of expectations than if you were just like, you were just here just to get the credit, you know? So, like, yeah. he was very lax. He was very lax with he and she. It was quite a few um, teachers. But, like, and I appreciate that because that at least helped me not completely hate it, you know? If he was great enough based on, like, you got to, you know, like, I'm watching every little thing you did. Yeah, my, my high school Spanish teacher always... Well, she mostly spoke Spanish, so I guess that was... Uh, we didn't do that. <laughs> no, it was all English. <laughs> What's the point of Spanish class if you aren't even immersed in Spanish? You're asking me. I think they didn't want them. They were trying to, you know, I think that was due to the, you know, 
faculty and things like that. But yeah, no, he definitely didn't. Not none of my teachers, even in college, none of them ever like spoke spoke Spanish at all. Like even in like little phrases, not ever, just ever. Just all it was was like paperwork, you know. <laughs> that that's so devastating. That's, yeah, that's the entire point of Spanish class. Bruh, yeah, you're asking me, <laughs> like. So so what was your, so originally you weren't that interested in Spanish, but um. So I guess that was your first time. So what about the second and third times? So funny enough, that's how it's the there was another time where I tried to get into it after when I was in junior college and that kind of it kind of fell by the wayside. But there was a third time where um, I had a my uh, grandfather actually ended up having a stroke. And so I went down to Waco. I just stopped school and went down to Waco to take care of him for nine months. And that left me not like I had nothing to do but just take care of my grandpa. And so what ended up happening was I was like, you know what? I don't got nothing to do. You know, it's Friday. Like it wasn't Friday. It was like whatever day. But um, I just had just just had so much free time. I was like, all right, this will be a really good time to actually get back into learning Spanish. And so... But all I knew was like the, just the grammar, you know, what I knew from high school or like how to learn a language. Right. So I got some books from like a pawn shop or a thrift store, I think. Um, and I was just studied. Oh, I used Duolingo. What did I do? Duolingo and like a grammar book, like for like three hours a day for I want to say like like um, two months. Yeah, I think it was like two months. Every day, my brain would just be racked, just like, oh, I would have a headache just from just just trying to understand every last thing of grammar and, you know, like, oh, especially because I'm not like a grammar dude. Yeah, and I, so I know what it feels like when, like, after immersing or after immersing with something really hard, your brain feels dead. Yeah, but it, I wasn't even immersing, though. It was just yeah. like Duolingo. Like, I would go look at Duolingo and anytime I saw something that didn't make sense to me, I would just Google infinitely like that. Like, I would Google, okay, why is there, like, a low here? What does that mean? What does that do? Or is there an A here? And then it would the Google result would bring up more terms that I didn't know. So I had to look up those terms. And then that definition would click more. Th- so I was just, like, yeah, laddering I, into oblivion <laughs> when I was doing that. Yeah, I had a similar experience where I was using um, – I was looking up, like, every single word that I came across. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, uh, do you know Anki, the program? Yeah. Oh, right, right. I just sorry. Right. I remember you watched the video and you said, yeah. <laughs> so I, I would try to find a new word and then um, the new word would have like an example sentence, but then that example sentence usually have no new words. And then I would look at all the new words in that example sentence. And I yeah, kept and you just keep, yeah. And you just keep like, so I did that, but with grammar, which is even yeah. worse, especially at that point, like I, I knew nothing about grammar, like because even in English class, like I was always really good at like writing and writing essays, even with no with like zero grammatical knowledge. Um, like I had to learn. It took me a minute too to actually understand what is an adverb. Like I had I, and an adverb baffled me. I was just I had no idea how any of that stuff worked. And so you got you you have a guy sitting here, you know, young twenty two year old chap or twenty twenty one something like that. It was a long time ago, trying to learn grammar. Who had doesn't know what an adverb is? Who had just learned what an adjective was? And okay, that makes sense. Now I gotta learn, you know. So yeah, it was, and I think that greatly influenced my like, um, I would say apprehension, my current apprehension towards a lot of grammar and all that stuff. Just because I remember like how frustrated I would get, and and I would like I said spending so much time just doing the grammar kind of thing, and getting to the point after two months where i still feel like i was i just i didn't know anything like I, i'm like bro i didn't spend so much time and i have i still have no idea what i'm doing you know how far i was like how far in the yeah. duolingo tree did you get well see the thing is they add on to the duolingo tree so i don't even think it was as long as it is now um but i would say from what i remember i might have been like halfway to 60 percent away into it like it took i was going so slow and i read and i redid the things and just like you know there was a bunch of grammar in there i didn't know like i would look in the notes and it was just it was like i did absolutely zero immersion so i when i at the end of the two months i sat in my chair and i'm like all right 
I've been like grinding at this for two months. Surely I'll be able to like make a sentence. So I was trying to say like, I was like, okay, I looked, I looked at a lamp. I'm like, surely I could say this is a lamp. I'm just like, <laughs> eh, eso, eh, estas, estos, es ser, I don't, I'm like, bruh. Can't <sighs> conjugate ser. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I have no idea. And I'm just like, bro, this is what I got. And so that's actually, I ended up reading, um, I actually ended up, was so desperate, I was looking online. And that's what kind of got me into looking on like you language learning YouTube scene or whatever. Cause I was just like, I, it's gotta be a better way. Or it's gotta be something I'm doing wrong. And I stumbled upon Benny the Irish polyglot. And he was like, why it was an article. Why, why learning Esperanto could help for two weeks could help improve your Spanish. And so I was like, Oh, okay. So I looked into a kind of, da, da, da. okay, now what is this wrong? Whatever. Da, da. And so then I learned, I was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to learn Esperanto for two weeks and then come back. And I should help me understand grammar a lot more because of the simplicity of the, well, simplicity of the grammar. Um, and I did that. And my Esperanto was like, in two weeks was significantly better than the Spanish. Even though obviously I, I still sucked. I still couldn't really say much, but like, it was still like, I can actually make a sentence, you know, like, yeah, you know, and so just, then I just in two really weeks, picture. just in two weeks, bro. Like, and then, then I got really good. Then I was like, I just kept going with Esperanto because it was like, oh my, this I got addicted to the, the progress, and it really helped me learning Esperanto. Really helped me understand like grammar, like you know what I mean. So now when I'm approaching Spanish, none of this is really complicated or, um, super weird. You know what I mean? It's like I understand like a lot of gram, uh, pretty much all the grammatical kind of aspects of everything. I kind of understand how things work. I kind of know how to. And so when I was learning Spanish, I never really had to dive into the grammar because like, oh, okay, in this situation, use it for this. And then I said, okay, yeah, okay, makes sense. And you just move on, you know? That's so interesting how uh, it, it kind of reminds me how um, learning one ro romance language can help you learn a second romance language. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But you say your Esperanto is still better than your Spanish? Yeah, significantly. <laughs> but then how like, many, I feel it. Yeah, I was just chatting with him. How many hours that. do you have in Ex Esperanto then? <laughs> I don't know. I never tracked. I've probably spent. Um, I would. Pro I would say I've spent co a comparable amount in Esperanto. It's kind of tricky though, because I've, I've had like, I've had moments where I was like chatting for like three hours a day, you know, with like five, four or five buddies in Esperanto for like every day for like a week, you know. So it's like, I haven't really had that those same kind of moments with Spanish. I've chat with people, but. Nowhere near frequently, but even if I, I feel like at some point I, my hours are probably more comparable, right? But so let's say around twelve hundred, we just entertain that number. But the amount of progress that you make in Esperanto is probably like double, given the hour. So if you spend a hundred hours learning Esperanto, it'll be the equivalent of like two hundred hours in Spanish. Okay. So, so yeah, it might even if it's our hour, the hours are comparable, which because like I said, I've been I learned Esperanto for three years and I've been learning Spanish for three years and I've been putting around more or less the same amount of time, so about which is about an hour a day. So they're probably very comparable. It's just I never tracked like all the times I was conversating and chatting with people and things like that. Um, but yeah, an hour a day for each language, more or less. Yeah, oh, that's a heavy load. Then it's got to be hard to keep that up every day, right? Oh, see, oh yeah, it's, it's very hard. Cause the thing is, I don't even do it every day. Um, I have like, so I just say I gotta get thirty hours for the month, you know. And so what ends up happening is, anytime I study Spanish, I always study Spanish like, like two or three hours. Like it's just that's just like a comfortable amount. I'm I generally just naturally study without forcing myself or anything. Um, but I don't study every day. So it's like I kind of I'll study for three hours, skip a day or two, study for three hours, skip a day or two, study for 40 minutes, skip a day, study for two hours. You know what I mean? So it's kind of yeah. it just averaged out as it that it's been like an hour a day. OK, so I guess you said that your Esperanto helped your Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. We're using the same. Actually, what methods were you using to learn Esperanto? So. I ended up using the beginning of me learning Esperanto was a very traditional approach, the, similar to what I was doing with Spanish. But the grammar was so much more approachable that I was even still able to make headway. 
Now, if I had to learn Esperanto again, I would be way faster than, you know, at like learning it than I was for like the first, I want to say six months. After about six months, I got to a B1 level. Um, but it was very like, I, I was fumbling around in the dark with a lot of it. Um, but I kind of, as I was still, like I said, I started learning, looking up, you know, you know, polyglots and you know the language learning community online that's why i kind of got into it that's what made me start learning esperanto by that point i had stumbled upon like steve kaufman stephen crash and then um through steve kaufman i ran into like ollie richards and then kind of led me to uh i kind of pinged around until i got to matt versus japan and you know, Brit versus Japan and just that kind of like the AJAC community. And then I was like, oh, so immersion learning, you know, so between Steve Kaufman, and Ollie Richards and Matt, I got really into like, OK, I learned immersion learning. And so then I transitioned more into a purely immersion approach after about the eight month mark. And then my ability in Esperanto kind of greatly skyrocketed. But my grammar was still an issue because, bro, grammar was so hard for me. I don't know why. But it was just like an enigma. Yeah, I think it's it's easier to learn grammar by trying to understand messages in it first and let mm. it it's more of a slow thing than trying to understand it all at once. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like some people are like gram like if you uh, the way I think about it is if you are good at grammar, like if you get grammar, then OK, grammar can be a pretty efficient and quick thing. But they all but the people who like grammar kind of in in our very programmer programmer pro <laughs> anyway um who are very for you know doing grammar don't consider the other side that much like i was on the other side which is like i was not good at grammar like i didn't have the mind or the interest to really delve into what is you know the components of grammar and how that and so to me it was very very difficult to do a grammar approach even through the basics because i just had no actual like concept of what any of that was you know because it's all been intuitive up until this point with english and so yeah it, it was rough but okay so getting into the youtube language learning community you kind of learned learned about a lot of uh well, i guess the immersion method so mm -hmm. we're using um i guess did you start out with uh the immersion method for esperanto or in, and then spanish or how did that work out with the two languages yeah so I kind of refined my immersion method. So I was primarily for my like immersion learner kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't watch a whole bunch of like Steve Kaufman, for example. Um, I kind of just thought he was just like an old, old guy. I'm like, oh, okay, this is old guy. He don't know what he's talking about. Um, then I, now I'm like, oh, Steve Kaufman's great. He's, he's a genius, whatever. But now, but then I'm like, ah, you know, I'm going to step to like the younger kid, you know, cool. You know, me and Matt are like around the same age. So I'm going to just take his word for it. Um, but the problem was with Matt was everything was about Japanese at the time, especially with AJAT and, and MIA and all that. And so it was, I had to kind of figure out what I can apply to actual Esperanto, right? Which is like nothing or the, the, the content and immersion and everything is completely different. So I had to kind of figure that out. Um, but then once I kind of, I kind of refined my process of, inf of immersion, my immersion based approach. And I even, and also did use Anki, even though I, I kind of burnt myself on Anki and that's when I was learning Esperanto, um, I refined that process. So when I got to Spanish, it was just kind of like plug and play for the most part. Okay. So for Esperanto, um, well, isn't it like a self-created language? So there's, there's probably not that many resources to like immersion resources to learn, right? Oh no, there's there's a bunch. The this is, so the thing about Esperanto, it punches above its weight in a lot of categories that it shouldn't based on what the fact that it was a construct it is a constructed language. Um and the that plus like the the amount of people that speak it, right? Like um so for we're talking about literature, right? Actually I have a I have a Esperanto book right here. So Esperanto, this is an original Esperanto book. Hey, can I? Uh... That's gonna get me demonetized. How is like, it gonna? Oh, uh... well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like an old, it's, you know, it's a Greek thing. Anyway, my bad. I it's completely no, forgot. I was just reading this last night, but. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, no. So Esperanto has a bunch of original literature. It has a 
um it has it has a lot of youtube content but the content like no one like there's not too many active youtubers at the point usually what happens is someone pops in on the esperanto scene makes a bunch of content dips out you know and kind of like that kind of happens so you can find you can find a surprise amount of content like that um there's a crap if you're talking about learning resources there's too many learner resources too many um like i said the esperanto tree is like big on duolingo they have like three hundred thousand active learners every day and then they've had i forget the, they, they got rid of the total number but there's like an esperanto to english esperanto to spanish esperanto to portuguese esperanto to french like you know it's there's a there's a gang of resources um so i didn't have in a shortage of emerging content the thing is you know it's you can't be too picky at the same time. There's a few, there's several uh, pretty good podcasts, um, but that's about it. You just can't be picky about it. Okay. So, um, so what did you do for Spanish? I guess after you had that two month period where you're studying for about three hours a day. So, mm -hmm. um, if you did do immersion, then what type of content were you learning with, or like, did you watch videos or read with, books? With Spanish? Yeah. Okay, with Spanish, it was primarily my bad. It was primarily through uh, anime and like kids' cartoons, like not even kids, like the cartoons I used to watch when I was a kid were like the thing that mainly helped me stay consistent. Um, and because I didn't have like these were things I was already wanting to watch, so like I wanted to rewatch like Avatar: The Last Airbender. I wanted to rewatch Danny Phantom, and I missed the old X Men cartoons. So I'm like, okay, bet watching those in Spanish, like because I I wanted to watch them in English regardless. I just realized, oh, I can just do it in Spanish. Um, anime also was a big thing. So luckily, when the time when I was getting into Spanish, Crunchyroll, Funimation, um, and Netflix got started getting really serious about Spanish dub content. And so now it's like so many, you know, easily accessible Spanish dubs on Crunchyroll and Netflix. But you know, so it got it got really easy. Mm, I see. So mm. were you were you watching it um, with English subtitles or with Spanish subtitles? Uh, yeah, Spanish subtitles, man. Or really, so okay. The thing I should clarify too: when I started learning Spanish, I didn't like, I didn't read anything for like the first four or five months. So like, I didn't read any kind of text, anything in Spanish. I just wanted to kind of listen to it, or kind of take it in that way. Um, I would search up words though. That was the only thing that I did actually read because I was I had to figure out how to search up words, but I still didn't even do that a lot. Um. Luckily, because Esperanto has a, a that's like vocabulary basis off of Latin, so there can be between Eng English Esperanto, it was easier enough to kind of guess more or less what some a lot of the words were. Um, it's not exactly one on one. There's 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 not a whole bunch of overlap. I think Italian has a much higher overlap with Esperanto than uh, Spanish does, but you know. Okay. It was it was enough. It was doable enough for me to be able to kind of do that without for the first four months. Okay, so that was um, that was for Esperanto, but in terms of uh, Spanish, um... no, no, I'm saying that was for Spanish. Oh, right. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, no, that was so. So when I that, it's tricky. So yeah, I learned Esperanto for like three years, then I started learning Spanish. But for the first four months of Spanish, I didn't read anything. Okay, I, I just only listened to kids shows. I only listened to whatever. I didn't actually, um, I didn't read anything at all. My listen, you mean like watching kids cartoons? Yeah, but without subs. Like I didn't read anything with subs. I didn't oh, read okay. anything. I didn't, I didn't read people's chats. I didn't do, do anything like that. The only thing I would do, I was watch shows. And if I heard a word clearly enough, which didn't happen often to search it up, I would, but usually I didn't even do that. I was just I able to be, I said, because of the help of like my English and Esperanto, like, it was it was it was parsable enough sometimes where I could kind of figure out what was going on. OK, how much do you think that watching those shows helped helped with your learning level? I think they helped a ton, mainly because it was enough to keep me grounded to like enjoying, you know, like um, enjoying the ambiguity because I already knew the plot. So that got rid of a lot of um, barriers too. Dubs, I, I'm a big proponent of like dubs and translated materials, especially up until like once you get to like stage three, then I'm like, all right, you can start winning off that if you want. Um, because it's like dubs are much more enunciated, much more. 
right? So their pronunciation is better, things like that. But it's at a natural pace. It's at a natural rhythm. Then you got music, explosion, whatever. It kind of, you know. Yeah. So it's it's really good practice, but not the same as like native native material. You know, normal non animated stuff. Okay. So how long um, did you watch this dub material for? Uh, uh yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I would say yesterday is my time. I pretty much I still watch it. Like, um, like because at this point I just don't watch anime, um, in Japanese or in English. Like I just, so that's like a consistent thing. Um, I've been watching more no- native shows, so like you know, but I still like I just because like I still I still like anime regardless. It's not like I'm I'm gonna be like all right cool. Um, if I invite if I, I what happens if there's a new anime I want to watch I'll check the the Spanish dub I mean the English dub and the Japanese and if they or really just the Japanese and the Spanish and if it's like okay I think the Spanish dub is pretty solid then I'll just watch the Spanish dub you know or if I like the voices you know which wherever one I kind of like the voices and nine times out of ten I just end up going with the Spanish dub anyway so I still watch anime in Spanish regardless so um, it's like it's a consistent thing that you've still been doing for all this time. Even when I've been completely burned out of Spanish, right? I'm like, oh, I don't want to know Spanish anymore. Like, oh, well, ooh, you know, I just want to watch anime. Like, I, but my default is to watch in Spanish. So it's like, even though I'm burned out, I'm, you know, still immersing kind of thing. That's great. It's to like have, yeah, it's great to have that baseline because I didn't um, up to like, I only started watching YouTube in Spanish in at like four years in, four years active. Mm, um, so interesting. I didn't really have like a baseline of um, like material that I actually like to watch. I only just watch stuff. I only yeah. consume stuff in Spanish because it was in Spanish, not because it happened to be in Spanish. Oh um, yeah, so yeah, I would say YouTube was also a baseline for me. It's not. I don't watch everything in YouTube, but there's certain follow certain content creators in Spanish that I just love watching their videos. Like that to me, that's so funny. Or this or that. So I'll still watch them. And I'll, like I said, I'll still watch anime YouTube. So regardless, I'm still getting like, you know, a decent baseline of like, you know, 30 minutes, 40, 40 minutes, of, of almost a day of just stuff that I'm going to watch automatically anyway. So I, I would recommend that to anybody. Find something that you... That's why I'm big on dubs. A lot of people hate or think translating material is terrible. You know, like I'm reading... Like I read a, my favorite light novel series in Spanish, you know, all the way through. It's like 15 volumes. Um, like I'm just, I just, I love translated material because the, what I find is a lot of native Spanish material isn't very like, I'm very big into fantasy and sci-fi and there's not a lot of that in Spanish. It's usually like dramas or, you know, you know, some ladies, you know, cheating on their husband. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of stuff. It's not like fantastical. And so I like that. And if it is fantastical, get nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10 it's translated. Yeah, I usually I'm not the biggest fan of dub materials because of the the stuff or the content of the na- the language that you lose over the translation. But mm-hmm. if you're at a lower level, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to pick up on that. But once you get to a higher level, um, you should probably just I, I think going for uh, native materials is better because you pick up on more subtle things. Yeah, like I think so. The ratio is like I th- personally the way I did it was like. If not, count, but I was, I was still listening to a lot of YouTube too, though. So like my my anime to like YouTube ratio was like 50-50. But like, but if we're talking about like actual media, like ninety percent of it was translated material. Ninety five percent of it was translated material, right? Because um, I also read manga, anime, and then light novels in Spanish. Like it's just like whatever, translated material. So like ninety five percent of it, whatever, is translated material until I got to like stage three. Then it's now it's more like a 50-50. 60 40 you know of native native material and then uh spanish dub material or translated material okay so what uh what youtube channels do you watch in spanish um i used to watch luisito uh, luisito comunica a lot i don't watch him anymore and same thing with super holly um ones i like a lot um eba is really funny um there's a guy that i love he's like my favorite one it's like baby bait dude is hilarious i love listening to him he's from spain too um i'm trying to think of the actual names enchufe i don't know if you've ever heard of enchufe yeah the only ones well, i've heard of so far are um luisito and Ivai. 
Okay. And Too Fit is like they make skits. Super. I actually watched those when I was a, in a beginner. Super difficult to understand, but they were so funny. Like even if you don't, it's one of the things where you don't even have to understand what they're talking about to laugh at the skit. You know, because right. it's like they communicate so much through, you know, the the scene that you pretty much already know what's going on. Um, and Too Fit was super funny. I'm trying to think. There's there's a lot of stuff like that I watch. I, I Mr. Solace. I, I'd like listening to. I was like, okay, my one. Of, that's one. Of, actually, that was one of my bases with um. YouTube reason why I listened to, was able to listen to a consistent amount of YouTube was because I listened to way too much content, language learning content about how to learn a language instead of actually learning the language. So I was like, right. okay, if I want to do that, I'm going to at least I need to at least Google or find Spanish speakers that talk about language learning languages, so I can still hear about learning language even if they repeat the same ten things over to me over and over again. I got to at least get do that in Spanish. And that's kind of what I did. So that's why that was like, that's like, I was like a good chunk of my immersion material, just listening to like Mr. Salas or like, um, Jardín de Martín or like the, whatever the cliche language learner, uh, learning content creators in the Spanish scene. Uh, that was a big part of, uh, Espanolo Automático, stuff like that. Have you heard about gymming Spanish? Yeah. 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 The thing is though, so I never was able to get into Dream Spanish. I watched a few of his videos when it was like, because, you know, it gets recommended to me. So I'm like, oh, I want to actually see what, I'm curious what his viewpoint is on like this. Like, because he was like, oh, don't use set subtitles and don't learn grammar. I was like, oh, these, I'm going to see what these are, what he's talking about. Thing is, it was really hard for me to get into him because he just, by the time I got in, I found him. It was kind of like, I was kind of. At a good enough level, like a solid B1, where he was just speaking way too slow to me. You know what I mean? Like, hola, soy, hoy, vamos a hablar. So it's like, okay, I I can't, I, it's too slow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something, a habit I've gotten into is always watching my videos at 1.5x speed. Um, The only thing about that, though, is it kind of destroys, like, the music or any kind of, like, effects or any kind of, like, you know what I mean? It kind of, yeah. it only works if it's, like, pure speech, you know? Yeah, that's usually the videos that I watch. Because I, I watch, um, usually my U my YouTube English content is, like, mostly speaking. So I watch mm -hmm. that at actually 2x speed. But for Spanish, it'll be usually 1.25 or 1.5x. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of the things where, like, he he just spoke so slow that even in the advanced videos, he speaks really slow. So it's kind of like, it, I think he's just a guy that speaks really slow because I've listened to him, like, getting interviewed by other Spanish, like, just Spanish speakers, and he just he just talks really okay. slow. <laughs> but uh, the only thing about the 1.5x speed, I think that would get me to, I get worried about my, like, I kind of care for my attention span. And so I don't want to do anything that'll... I, that I feel like might shrink my attention span or create expectations like uh you know like okay let's get to this quick oh yeah two five x speed okay dude. okay you know what I mean like yeah I don't I want to have the ability if I want to because I, I do this on a regular where I'll see a two hour YouTube video and I'm like I right, bet let me clear a couple hours in bed yeah let's watch let's enjoy it you know and right. sit down and and not be you know it might take like one break in there but I like the fact that I can do that or sit down and read a book for three hours and not have an issue you know. Yeah, I, I can't really uh, study for, well, I guess my baseline for studying is usually like an hour uh, per language, mm -hmm. but um, usually like studying for three hours doesn't happen that often. It's usually yeah. like one hour. And that, that I'm, I would say my max without a break is two hours. I'll start feeling it. I'm be, cause like, say I'm immersing, I'm reading a book or I'm whatever. Once it hits two hours, I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what time it is. I'll just look, I'm like, oof. What time is I'm like, okay, it's been two hours. All right, let me let me take a 20 minute break and come back and do another hour and a half or something. But like, yeah, like that, like I'm I tend to notice people that end up like speeding up everything and like you know, putting you know, having a million tabs and cutting things in chunks, they tend to be a lot more like, all right, I'm done, you know, oh, I'm losing interest, or I'm you know, kind of flippant, I guess, or maybe you know, uh just capricious, maybe I don't know with with like they're just kind of do all over the place and so i try to not i try to prioritize like all right be kind of slower pay attention you know let's watch this video let's you know 20 minute video to me is like nothing you know a 30 minute video is nothing so it's like let's take care of that you know i listen to podcasts a lot that kind of thing 
Has, have podcasts been a big thing that ha- that helped you improve your Spanish? Audiobooks were like the key. Um, I have a very repetitive job, and so I would listen to audiobooks. And so I have 250 hours on my sheet where it's um, active listening. When, with audiobooks, once I got to a good enough level to like actually follow the plot okay, you know, it'll be a little blurry at scenes and times, but I was able to, for the most part, follow the plot. Once I got to that point while I was working, it was just like, I got in so many hours. It, you know, it wasn't background mute, uh, listening or anything like that. That was, I would say that was the one. And that was like passive or was that pa- active or passive like listening? It was active in the sense that my job is so repetitive that I was able to follow it 100% or give like 80%, 80, 90% of my focus, you know, fairly consistently. Um, to me back, if I'm like, if you say background or passive, it's like, okay, I've been zoning out for like the last two minutes. Now I'm going to pay attention for a little bit and zone back out for two more minutes. You mean? Okay. But if I'm able to follow everything bit by bit and like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, and actually be engaged in that, even though I'm doing something random, you know, like driving or something, then to me, it's like active. But once you only once you get to a certain level, once you get to the point where you can actually comfortably understand it, you know, okay, uh, then it becomes active. Yeah, I've gotten uh, the hardest part about um, listening to stuff in the background is that like I'm basically always doing my college work and it's impossible yeah. for me to s- listen to Spanish and do the college work at the same time. Yeah, but, yeah that that wouldn't yeah. be active. And yeah, once people are like, oh, so it's active if I'm doing math and doing, I'm like, no, 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 it's math, bro. Yeah, like, multitask. Yeah, no, that's different, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm talking about if you're like you're walking on a trail or you're walking your dog and listen, like that's, yeah, it doesn't take too, it takes very little brain power to do that. And you, so you can actually really, but you just, you know, fully concentrate on what you're listening to i'm interested so how how long in your spanish journey did you start listening to audiobooks that was because mm-hmm. that was probably more advanced material oh yeah so i when i was in like l- solid 2c it's like stage 2c i don't know if you're familiar with the stages i i know them i know that there are stages but i don't know them off the top of my head okay so would that be like like in terms of like the you know the deli scale yeah, wait. The like, CFR or the Delhi? What is the Delhi? Like a A one, A two, B one, B two. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess C one would be. I mean, not C one. Like two C would probably be like upper B one, fringe B two, like okay. in the middle, kind of thing in terms of comprehension, as what we're talking about. Um. Yeah, because I would say stage four is like solid B2. So 2C is like right around, right in between B1 and B2. Um, uh, but yeah, so basically in that range is when you get to, like you don't, when I, when obviously when, it, when you first start, it's kind of like, when you first get to the point where, like let's say when you first get to the point where you get past A2 and you get to like a very janky B1, you got to like spin like a hundred percent of your focus in order to understand like 40% of the material. You know what I mean? But like a hundred percent of your focus has been like to understand like 60%. You just push that up to a hundred. Once you get that comprehension up to like 90 something percent, then you get to the point where you're just like, ref- you're making it more efficient. And so like where you, now, instead of needing a hundred percent to understand a hundred percent of your focus to understand 90% of the material. Now you need, 90% of your focus to understand 90% and then 80% of, you know, to understand 80, you know what I mean? And so once I you, see. once it, it takes up less mental resources, then the background listening becomes more valuable because now it's like, I used to have to like focus, you know, put on my headphones and just like listen and listen. And if something like fail or something moved, my attention would drop and I would just be, you know, lost. But now I can like listen to stuff and I can type and I can, oh, yeah, yeah. And see, but I'm still like locked in what's going on, you know? So once it takes, once you get to the point where native, uh, where Spanish or the, whatever the target language is takes up less of your mental faculties, then you're able to really um, take advantage of that, of like active listening and really take that to the next level. Okay. So it seemed like the, the audiobooks really help with your level then, right? Yeah. Big time, yeah. big time, big time. And when I first started, it got to the point where when I first started, I'm like, all right, I'm going to try audiobooks. I, gra- I download a few. They seem super interesting to me. 
Um, and I listened to the audiobooks twice. So I kind of went through a list of like one audiobook, one, two, three. So I would listen to one, listen to two, listen to three. Before I moved on to book two and three of those, I would kind of redo it. And then, you know, it was kind of weird. I kind of did it in a weird step ladder system. But when I first started listening to audiobooks, I noticed that I would understand all the dialogue, like the dialogue between people. But I would get lost in like the descriptive language or the language when they're describing the environment or like when they're like talking about how eloquent this guy's jacket is and they're going into detail on like a button or something. You know, I would I notice I would get lost in that kind of stuff. And then but I would understand the dialogue. And so under, just understanding the play, I mean, the, the players, the, the characters talking amongst themselves was enough for me to still be able to follow the story. And as on as I moved on to the second and third book and then I re-listened to that. I noticed, okay, I'm actually understanding certain descriptions and some are still kind of gibberish and, you know, whatever. Um, and then, and this is while I'm working, right? So I'm, I'm getting paid, I'm working, I'm doing my thing. Once I listened to that book a second time, I would then download um, an audio, the audio book uh, version of it, I mean, the, not the ebook version of it, and actually go to the chapter where I was like having a lot of difficulty. I would make, I remember what part of the story was and I would actually read it out. I'm like, oh, that's why I couldn't understand it. It was like, cause it was like, they had like 20 new words that I have no idea what these things are, you know? Like, okay, but that, that was exciting for me cause that meant that I just wasn't hearing the words, you know? But I was able to parse, you know? Cause when I first started, I had a problem where I knew all the words I would look, oh, I know all these words, but I don't, I didn't, I couldn't hear all the words, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm excited cause I knew all the words or I could hear all the words. I just couldn't hear the words that I didn't know. So which is what was your method listening? So you said you listened to it three times. I listened. To, so if we have one audio book, I would listen to it twice. And if I still kind of had, if it still was like a blurry on the, enough scenes, I would get like the audio. I mean, the ebook and kind of check those scenes and be like, all right, so why was it? So why is this scene so chaotic for me when I'm listening to it, when I'm at work? And I'm like, and so I would look up the words and whatever. Um, and that would help me for the second book. And so when I get to the second book, the second book is like significantly easier, but I would still have a lot of kind of blackout moments, I guess you could say, where I would rewind and rewind. I just, for some reason, wasn't getting it. And I just kind of did that. And by the time I actually jumped to like native material or, you know, got more invested in native material, they were way more clear. Cause even, I, even when I got comfortable with, um, anime, listening to dub content, Native content was still felt very blurry, you know? It was like, ooh, this just feels, it feels like a big jump up, you know, or like a, just a, a big jump up. But I feel like audiobooks was a way to kind of bridge that gap. Okay, so the, it seems like the audiobooks, because I, I've listened to a couple audiobooks. Um, if you ever get the chance, you should try listening to um, Un Libro, Una Hora. So it's basically, they, they take an entire book and, they, and then they condense it down into an hour. And... That the vocabulary they use in there is so hard. Um, sometimes I don't know the English words, so it's mm -hmm. yeah. My my perception yeah. of audiobooks is that they're usually, I guess, harder than native material, or harder than like day to day language. But it seems like uh, yeah, it seems like you made a good choice going for uh, more easier audiobooks. Yeah, you know, I'm, I went for a lot of um, uh, what was it? What do you what do you call it? Youth. What do you call it? What's that? What's that genre? Um, it's like youth or teen something, teen romance or teen youth, something like that. Like the, um, the Hunger Games or actually not. Kinda, yeah. That kind of, in that kind of vein or I, like Brandon Sanderson and then like, yeah, that kind of youth kind of thing. Um, where it was like, man, it, it got to a point where like, I didn't give, I didn't give, I didn't care at all about, you know, learning Spanish, like screw Spanish. Like I got to figure out. What, I'm I'm in I'm at work like hype putting in my earbuds like all right bro we gotta figure out what's going on with uh what's called because last time I, you know what I mean like I don't so when you get to that point where you just don't you don't care about learning Spanish like I could have been burnt out but I'm about to listen to this audio book because I need to figure out what happens you know that's like um uh, that's like a really good thing because to me podcasts were a little bit too boring in that sense they were a little bit too which I love podcasts in English but I don't know it felt like it still felt like a step up, but if you got a, if it's, if there's an audio book worth a good story and then the voice actor is really good, man. Yeah. So how many, um, how many years in did you start listening to audiobooks? Oh, 
I want to say a year and a half in maybe or two or two years, a year and a half to two years in. Okay. It was fairly recently, not even two years. No, a year and a half in, I think. Okay. A... And you, you still listen to audiobooks? Not as much. I'm going to get back into them. Um, for context, I think I have like 250 hours on my Audible of like listen that I've listened to of audiobooks. But I also do listen to English audiobooks too. Like I listen to English audiobooks. But I would say maybe, mm, I would say maybe a hundred of that is in Spanish. Is okay. a guess. Yeah, that, that sounds great. So, at what point did you? Um, I guess I, I'd say you're you've reached basic fluency by now. But at what point did you realize that you're probably fluent in Spanish? Um. I, the the definition I would have I've always had with fluency is your ability to express yourself in a spontaneous way. You know, like it doesn't have to be eloquent. It doesn't have to be without errors or perfect. It just needs to be spontaneous, and it needs to be you. You know what I mean? And so I noticed I I didn't I stopped translating a long time ago, like in my head. But I noticed, but I still didn't feel fluent, was because, but when I got to the point where I was like. I had to spend, like, an idea would come in my head, right? Like, the just vague idea. I would, hmm, no, this is a better way to explain it. When someone would say something or someone have, like, a, someone explain something or or I would want to reply, I was able to start this talking before knowing what I actually wanted to say. You get what I'm saying? Wait, can you say that again? So let's say it's my turn to speak in a conversation, right? Like some ooh, someone says something, I would I was able to open my mouth and start talking without actually knowing what I was gonna say beforehand. Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? You're just gonna like figure I, it out on the spot. Exactly. While I'm talking, I'm like, ooh, I would have, you know what I mean? And it, and without hitching, without stopping, just you know, like you just kind of walk through what you're trying to say. And like, and I would and I was able to do that, like it got to the point when I was able to do that like eighty percent of the time. You know, where I'm like, oh, I just start talking and I know my brain's going to figure out what I want to say, you know, now, you know. Okay. Yeah. Something, something that we haven't really talked about. Well, we've, we've talked a lot about listening and reading, but we haven't talked about speaking with other, other, uh, native speakers. So mm -hmm. what, what's your experience with that been like? Um, so in outputting is interesting. I've definitely haven't done a whole bunch, um, I've kind of just went into waves of like, okay, I'm going to speak a bunch to get it to like a, this rough level. And then I'm going to stop for a while and I'm going to start speaking again a bunch and I'm going to stop. You know, I kind of go handling my waves, but I don't like output consistently over a long period of time. Um, my first experience, I started outputting when I had like 500 hours. I was like, all right, I want to start outputting. I don't want to start outputting a lot. I just want to get my output to like a B1, like a rough B1, um, which shouldn't take too much, too long. And then stop again because I was running in situations. It was because I live in um, a city where there's like a large population, around 40 percent of the population of my area speaks Spanish um, natively. I ran into too many situations where there were n native Spanish speakers, right, that didn't know English that well and couldn't really understand me speaking English. Because in most situations, I run into the dude who understood English, but didn't speak English. And he could speak to me in Spanish and I could speak to him in English. Cool. But there was some where I would say something and it would still be looking at me like, uh, I have no idea what you're saying. So I was like, okay, I just want to get to a point where I can at least say something roughly if I need to help him out. You know, there's a bunch of little situations where someone, for some reason, the car didn't work at the gas station, the lady didn't speak Spanish, you know, whatever. Um, so that's what my plan. So I spent about 25 hours of output just, you know, in, in the course of like three weeks. Um, just trying to really get out all the stuttering, stammering, the not, you know, blank, frozen, you know, whatever. And then I got to, like I said, a rough B1. And I just shut up again, you know. And and then I did, I, I was like, all right, I'm going to start outputting again once I hit a thousand. And that's what I did. So once I hit a thousand, I spent, you know, maybe like 50 more hours trying to get that out, you know, of output, of chatting with people on Discord, having my, talking with my Italki tutor, um, and yeah, and, and you just, I just realized once I was getting to a level, I'm like, man, I'm actually, I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm really not having to think I'm able to like, Oh, Hey, Oh yeah. 
de hecho, estuve haciendo eso, you know, ayer, y, you know, whatever. It's like, oh, you know, whatever. And so I'm like, whoa, well, man, I'm actually, I think I'm actually at a, like, a conversationally fluent kind of level, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's great. So that was at a thousand hours, or would mm -hmm. you still say that by yourself at uh, about 1,200 hours now? Oh, yeah, I'm at 1,200 hours now, or technically, like, five hours shy or something like that, but you round it's... Up. Uh, It's not even a roundup. There's just so many times where I've got, I'm assuming, like, my actual, if there was some way to actually know the amount of time I've spent, I'm assuming it's higher just because the amount of time, like, I hop in a car and the Spanish radio is playing because I just keep it on. But I don't track that because it's so inconsistent, you know? Um, or, you know, I walk into a gas station and, like, there's a big sign in Spanish. I read the sign in Spanish. Why? Because it's in Spanish and I'm curious what it says, you know? When I was installing my internet, I, used i was like oh do you want the english or the spanish i want the spanish and i just i didn't count you know there's so many little moments where i just didn't ever count it so it's kind of like i don't expect the number to be perfect or even a hundred percent accurate all i know all i know is especially when i was even planning this out i was like look if i have a thousand hours that means i have roughly a thousand hours i could have two thousand that means i don't have like two thousand hours and that means i don't have 500 hours you know what i'm saying yeah so That's all. I, that's all that was important to me. Yeah, that it's great that you've. Uh, were you always tracking your time since the beginning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I had done that because I only started tracking my time at um, five years in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. had to do a lot of napkin math there. But <laughs> See, I, the I, when I when I got to a point where I was with this run, I wish I would have tracked. I'm like, dang, I wish I would have tracked it. I was like, I want to do this, so I want to do. I want to actually track it from the beginning with Spanish, um, but I got to make sure that like. So I kind of refined how do I want to track it. I was like, I got to make sure if I'm going to be doing this for like three, four years, I need to make sure it's a very simple process for me. You know, like I don't cut anything out. I don't do whatever. Like I sit down. Like let's say I got some material. I sit down. There's a little app. I click play or record. You know, track, and then I do whatever. And I want to. If I zone or if I, I count that, so if I'm searching stuff, you know, usually I'll use like a monolingual dictionary. If not, I'll use Spanish dict. And then I, when I want to hop up or I stop, I, you know, I just hit stop, you know, stop tracking, boom. And then I just do that. And that's all I do. And it's super simple. I don't have a bunch of extra, you know, whatever. I made a Excel sheet and I just punch in the numbers in Excel and then boom, you know. So that, that's it's good for you to... Um... Well, it's interesting you use Excel. I thought you'd probably use something like Google Sheets because are you ever concerned about like your computer, like your hard drive, hard drive getting corrupted and your Excel file like going away or something? Yeah, I have. Um, I don't know if you have on Windows. You have like OneDrive. Uh, yeah, I, I've used that so before. You can, yeah, you can put in a OneDrive, and I believe you can sync your OneDrive with your with another device. So like my laptop has the same thing. Okay. And so it just kind of syncs between each other. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, it's, I also have it on a flash. Hey, if it happens, it happens. Like, at the end of the day, it's like, like I said, well, I'm going to stop tracking and get 1500. So, as long as my computer doesn't crap out before then, it's like, it's cool. That's, yeah, that's good. So, I think uh, when you're talking about your hours, you mentioned monolingual dictionaries. So, mm -hmm. what, um, what, when did you, or I guess I should ask, did, have you made the monolingual transition yet? I did. And funny enough, I switched back. <laughs> um, I made the transition, I want to say, yeah, like around 400 hours in. I have to, I haven't, I say it, I stayed in one of my videos, but um, I think it was at 400 hours in. I kind of was like, all right, I'm going to switch. I think I'm getting enough Spanish where I can switch. So I switched like my phone. I only use, it got to the point where once I stopped translating my head, I was like, okay, I really need to use i want to use a monolingual dictionary so i get more exposed to spanish when i'm doing my lookups and i switch my phone my laptop steam everything i just switch everything to spanish um and then i got really comfortable you know i played i'll play video games if i was going to play a video game i'd make sure to switch it to spanish um and i got real comfortable doing that doesn't mean i understood every word like no there's a lot of lookups and stuff like that but um i kind of got through it and but then it got to the point where like it got not worth it because anytime anyone ever needed to use my device they were just like oh god what, i don't you know what i mean like it's an yeah. emergency and they have to run off and and use my and i'm like ah, i don't know how to you know it's like okay so yeah, i ended up having to 
retroactively switch everything. So I got tired of switching it, giving it back to them. Then they give it back to me. And I was like, nah, okay. You know? Um, so I switched back just because of that. And I used to mainly do lookups with a monolingual dictionary, but now I kind of changed it because um, it's just quicker. Like it got to the point where like, okay, this is great. Um, you know, I, I'm, I can comfortably read the dictionary and understand words without too much, really rarely without any issue or really with issue. And um, it was just like, man, it's just, it's just, it's just faster for me. Like if I'm watching an anime in Spanish, I'm like, Oh, he said, he said a word. Oh, he said, it sounded like he said this typing in in Spanish dict. Boom. I got it. Okay. Keep going. You know, as opposed to like the way the real dictionary works. So I guess you've mentioned um, looking up words while you consume content. So what's your, what's your strategy for, or I guess what's your threshold for looking up a certain word? Do you look up like every word you come across or um, for, like only 10 uh, mm-hmm. for an audiobook or? Oh, I'm so the thing is, some people don't like disrupting like the flow of their, you know, like when they're immersing. I don't, I, I, I've never been a person who cared about flow. Like, I rewind stuff a lot in English, you know, just because, like, I want, oh man, what did he say? That was so cool. What is you know, rewind? You know, like, I do that all the time anyway in English. So, to, in Spanish, there's no problem. So, look, doing lookups um, and rewinding a lot is what I naturally did when I'm watching YouTube videos and I'm listening to the audiobook. Even if I heard it clearly the first time, I just wanted to rewind just to, you know, just to hear it again or the delivery of the line or whatever. Um, but the general way I did it was I'm going to look up as much as I want to until I get tired of it. And then the second I, my, I get tired of it, then I just just play it, you know. So I didn't space it out. I didn't do whatever, which in most cases I was cool with looking up, you know, everything. Um, but I would, what I would happen would be I would look it up. I'm like, oh, okay, so it means this. Um, and is that word worth noting like is this the word for like you know research or is this the word for like you know onomatopoeia or something you know like okay one is clearly probably more common than the other you know okay well is this worth learning uh research uh, it could be onomatopoeia no you know you know so it's like i just kind of once i look it up i'll kind of judge whether it's worth you know like saving into anki or taking note of or whatever if it's like oh this is way too fancy i don't even know this word in english all right to the trash you go unless i see that word again you know then it's like okay i'll think about it yeah there is um i don't know i think it was stephen crashin that mentioned or he talked about the something about i plus one about mm-hmm. like the i guess the closest uh, or the most useful word that will get you to a higher level mm-hmm. so do you use like um that sort of level or that that sort of method yeah like so, yeah when i was newer i would pick the golden word like all oh, this word is like perfect you know because you when you for, try to when you learn a new word you want to then see that word everywhere but actually once you get to a certain point like it like now i'm kind of just i have an intuition whether i think the word will be useful um i don't use anki anymore though so it doesn't really matter it's just i use i let the my immersion be it's the natural um srs you know and just kind of if i see the word multiple times like uh, then I'll learn it. If I don't see it, if I haven't seen it forever, then I just haven't seen it forever. You know. How many? Uh, how long did you use Anki for? And how how did you use it? I used it for a year and a half, and then I stopped. Okay. Um. Yeah. I didn't make new cards every day. I did a lot of reps, or I I didn't. I I was not. I'm not like a streak person. Like the you know how I said like I was on and off when it came to studying. Like I would study. So I, that was also when I was like doing Anki. <laughs> so okay. it's like. I didn't really care about streaks or anything like that. Um, but I would also struggle with because um I didn't read like a crap ton. It was really annoying saving like cards and Anki what from just watching stuff, you know, or like you know listening to a podcast and trying to like it. It, it was that was more difficult than whatever. So because I didn't read much, it was more annoying to send its mind. And so I kind of would maybe learn like maybe five words a day, maybe new. Um, I basically never had a backlog of new words. It was always just, I would make them real quick and then I went, okay, those are my new words for the day. And, um, yeah, I would say I got to like 1400 words before I was like, or sentences or whatever, or cards or whatever. Before I was like, all right, yep, I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) I don't need this anymore. Yeah. 
but I didn't always use I didn't always use it for words. Like sometimes I'll use it for like set phrases or like a little interesting grammar for, or like a specific conjugation that like I didn't I, I wasn't used to. I'm like oh this looks nothing like the actual root word. Or I probably should say this in Anki so I'll know what it looks like kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good that you didn't get into the um the habit of making too many cards or making uh having a backlog because those are the mistakes that i've made and i mm. my spanish could have been so much better if i uh if i didn't make so many cards and focused on just making fewer cards yeah i've forgotten yeah. a lot of words yeah i mean yeah, listen, you're gonna forget them anyways like because i, I kind of didn't notice myself creeping into that where i was like saving like you you almost become like i don't want to say stingy but you say like like a collector you know data hoarder and, yeah, where you like you start slowly creeping like the at first the words you're saving into Anki or you, the words you're mining are so like common and, and you know and whatever and like oh, okay this is perfect super usable but then as you start to slowly creep up in your ability you start to reach for no nah, I could use yeah this word yeah I could use this word you know I could use the word for you know like I don't know duplicitous yeah I could I could see myself using that word one time you know and it's just like no bro like stick to angry or stick to you know you know whatever like stick to deceitful whatever don't just you know so like i kept, once i caught myself doing that i was like all right look because I, I i was very big in the mind like i'd already burnt myself out with anki and with esperanto so i was like look it, i gotta remember that this thing is only like a tool like I, it's so it's cool like once i i actually stopped anki for a little bit um like maybe like a month or two and i was still immersing and i'm like i'm still learning words bro like maybe it's not as efficient or whatever but like i'm still learning words at a pretty comfortable clip like it's not the end of the world if i wanted to put down on and so right after i went back to it and then i was like you know what i'm over this and i just sat donkey down I was like i'm over it. not using Anki no more so what is um what is a day and day or i guess um in your day-to-day -day life how do you uh use spanish do you watch um do you communicate with native speakers in real life or online or what do you uh, what content do you consume um i communicate like i chat all the time with people in discord so i have a few buddies um in discord there's an actual spanish to english um language exchange server on discord i use um through there i found even like there's actually a few spanish speakers that i chat with in the refold community that um we're just we'll just voice call or whatever video chat or whatever um so i spoke a lot of it was speaking with them or just you know whatever um that's mainly my output like sometimes i'll have to speak spanish like uh for work because there, there's a um, you know i'm in a spot where you know there's just people that don't speak english that well so you just I just have to use whatever janky you know use my janky spanish to kind of get the job done or whatever and it works out pretty well typically um that's mainly the output side of it. I also like to, like, when I'm watching content, I was big on, like, imitating what I was watching, even in the beginning. You know, like, especially, like, Luisito Comunica is a very expressive dude. So I'd be, I would, like, oh, I would pause what he said. And I'm, like, oh, that, that. I'll try to say how he said it and listen to it again. And, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I like him. He speaks very clearly. Yeah, he speaks very clearly. I think he's got a, just a very, like, relaxed nature to him. Like, I love listening to... Uh, listening to like how he just kind of goes on and he's, he's 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 a really entertaining dude um but that's kind of how i do an anime too like a, like you know how when you were a kid you'd watch like dragon ball z or something and you're like ah oh, you're like ah oh, man it's like i'll do the same thing but in spanish you know really enjoy it um and that also kind of helped me with my pronunciation i was like learning like imitating and like yeah you know just because it's like a really cool scene and acting it out um when in terms of immersion uh Right now, I'm really into Silvana Sinlana, which is um, the like a slice of life um, telenovela from uh, that was is heavily recommended by the refold Spanish refold kind of community. I'm also obviously I'm always watching anime, and um, I got a crap ton of Spanish books that I've only read like one, but they're like physical, so it's like more work. Come out, I'm like, oh, it's more I search. You know, I'm like. You know, oh, I, I gotta like turn it upside down and type. You know, it's it's a pain in the ass to kind of like search stuff. Yeah, but... that's what I hate about um physical books. Actually, this is a good opportunity. I have a couple months ago I got this, which is a Kindle. 
Mm-hmm. So that's what I read stuff on. Because I, I hate like opening up a book. And then when you have to look up a word, you have to like flip it over and then try to bend it and uh, break mm-hmm. it in. Yeah, that, that's yeah. all the worst. Yeah, that's a, so I got a bunch of, I like collecting Spanish books at this point. Or oh, Esperanto books too. I got like, I got like maybe 28 Esperanto books and like 35 Spanish books. But Spanish books is just so much easier to get for me. And, you know, I just go down to the bookstore and it's just like a whole aisle. So, but I like collecting like the books and like the languages that I'm learning. You know, I like the fact that I can just open a book and read and like, oh yeah, I can, I can read this, you know. Um, I need to actually read them though. That's the problem. I've only read like one of each language at this point, um, physically and non ebook. But um, yeah, that's the main things like anime. I'm watching Silvana Silana. I'm going to, I don't watch enough Netflix. I watch YouTube. Like the, the main things I've been watching is anime and YouTube throughout my whole thing. Those are the things that may kept, helped me be consistent, um, through the whole thing. And then, yeah. When I chat with homies from discord. That, that's great. Um, what YouTube, I guess we talked about what YouTube channels you watch. Is there any. Is there any YouTube video or a YouTube channel that you don't necessarily understand and you're trying to um you're trying to work towards understanding it? Hundred percent. Um I would say the language and not the language, the dialect I kinda struggle with the most. It used to be Spaniards, funny enough. Um now it's Argentinians. So there's a couple Argentinian YouTubers that I like I'll listen to and I'll be like I mostly kind of understand you, maybe. You know, there's a and channel. Then, yeah. There's <laughs> a up? channel, a good channel I know. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put I'll put it um, in the text of this video. But I'll I'll send you the name of it because mm-hmm. it's a good Argentinian uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, that's something I need to get better at. Um, I, I mean, just from the Discord server, like, there's so many. You run into so many different you know people from different countries like say you run into a bunch of argentinians a bunch of colombians a bunch of you know from basically every state or every country in latin america um of varying my qualities usually ranging from mid to like terrible you know um but so you i get i get enough practice where just me listening to being in the middle of a discord call with like four natives is enough for me to like I'm like hanging on for dear life in this conversation. Uh, it's like, and there's like one guy with like a terrible mic that I, that is speaking complete gibberish, but everyone understands this guy perfectly. And I'm just like, how? Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. It's, it's uh, feels an accent that I've um, had them. I guess if you, if you've known um, about my story, so I spent, let's see, spent about a year and a half to two years basically uh at studying native content but like listening like heavily listening sort of like watched um I, i'd listen to uh latin american podcasts um mm-hmm. there's one called radio ambulante that I uh, yeah to. yeah mm-hmm. and then there were some uh some tv shows or some popular tv shows um like el internado on netflix but basically mm-hmm. i studied for two years like hours a day for um listening heavily then i went to some uh what do you pasantia right internship um i went it was it was like a summer program and there are a couple puerto rican students there and i understood nothing that they said Mm. and i felt so demotivated so um that the accent i even like natives can't uh, understand a lot of accents like i've heard the chilean accent is bad yeah to me this chilean accent isn't even like to me it's not even spanish it's just like it's just like another language like okay no Chil- chileans are bilingual they speak chilean and they speak spanish natively you know because because yeah. anytime i run into someone from chile they always speak perfectly like like a perfectly neutral you know um spanish so it's like they just kind of code switch basically you know right because i didn't even know that chileans were difficult at first because everyone i ran into was just like yeah you know had a very neutral accent so to me they're bilingual you know <laughs> they speak two languages yeah yeah so yeah, but i never had too much problem too much trouble with puerto ricans they're a little bit weird like the slang um is weird but for some reason that show that show in with the argentinians just kind of it just breaks my brain i don't know it's just like when they're speaking fast and, it's like, and i'm just like this is weird. Yeah. So uh, what's your future plans for your Spanish? 
What, what are you planning to do with it? Um, I, w I still need I still need to make a lot of strides in my comprehension. Like I'm not as I'm not very worried about my output. I know it seems to be the opposite with a lot of people. Like they seem to be very worried about the output. But I'm just I just want to get to a point where I can under I can not have any anxiety about not understanding. You know, um, like I said, when I'm on Discord and for the most part, I understand what's going on, but I don't know, a couple people, I'm just like, oh, what are they saying? Or like, they'll like one dude will say like one word and everyone will just start dying laughing. I'm just like, I just missed something, you know, I'm like, what, what are these? Oh my God. You know, I just want to have, get to a point where I can understand comfortably like everything at like a level six or which is basically like near native level and be fine. But that'll probably be in like, you know. 10 years from now um but for the most part i'm not in a rush like i'm gonna stop keeping track at 1500 i'm gonna still do stuff in spanish like even now i would consider spanish for me has been generally back burner ish like i still put it i still average like an hour a day but instead of like an hour and 40 it's like an hour and 10 you know so it's kind of like it's dropping off you know i'm getting i've been really prioritizing like getting in shape and doing things like that um and I'm gonna gonna have a couple more priorities, so you know it's it's I'm to me I'm like I'm just on like the cruising mode, you know I'm just gonna be cruising with Spanish for like the next ten years, you know. And hopefully I'll get to the point in a few years from now where I'm like comfortably understanding what I want to. Doing like doing an hour a day minimum for Spanish is definitely not back burner. It's it's solid progress. Um yeah, well, since remember, I'm not doing it. When you say hour a day, you make it seem like I study every single day. But, like, it's more like three hours every three days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So, to me, it feels like a back burner because it's like, you know, I, that's something that always works for me. Like, because I, if I study Spanish, it, it's, it's never really a day where if I do bother to actually, you know, study or immerse a little bit, it's never for... Like, I don't, like someone who someone who can like oh I just emerged for like twenty minutes yesterday like to me that's like that's like really difficult you know because like one episode of a telenovela is like forty minutes so it's like I watch that and I watch a couple YouTube videos and I'm already at like an hour and fifteen minutes you know yeah I see um this is so embarrassing I wanted to uh, speak Spanish with you a little bit but I couldn't think of a topic to choose I, I didn't this is different than my others my other interviews because I mm -hmm. haven't made a list of questions. I want to get better at this, so. No pasa nada. Podemos hablar un poco sobre cualquier tema. Eso no importa. Me encanta tu acento porque es muy, um, no es marcado y mm -hmm. es muy claro. Ah, sí, sí. Gracias, gracias. De hecho, um, me gustaría conseguir un acento si, por ejemplo, si tuviera algún amigo que me, me pueda hablar en un acento puede conseguir el acento de, esa, de ese hombre eso me gustaría hacer pero por el momento solo trato de hablar como las personas de los, los doblajes o del, del contenido doblado prefiero hablar como esas personas de una manera que es más neutral ah eh, por eso tu acento es muy claro porque es sí. se basa en, en las palabras o eh, los sonidos de, del doblaje ¿no? Sí, sí, claro. Y por eso, por ejemplo, por el hecho que me gustaría imitar a los nativos o a las personas en la pantalla, eso es algo que siempre me gustaría hacer desde el principio. Y por eso me gusta mucho, y creo que es por, es, por esa razón que puedo hablar de una forma más neutral y no tengo un acento de, de algún país en específico. Pero algunas personas me, me dijeron que tengo un acento que es muy parecido a un mexicano, que es ca como que hay hay raíces de, de un, algún acento mexicano. Sí, también eh, me parece que no, no usas mucha jerga en tu día a día mm -hmm. y creo que sí. eso tiene que ver con, pues, con los doblajes. Tienen, pues, no suelen, no suelen usar eh, un acento muy marcado porque hay personas de varias... Eh, Vari... países masculinos sí. de varios eh, países mirándola, así que uh -huh. me, me parece que no usas mucha jerga sí, 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 de hecho de hecho la jerga me da miedo un poco es como es como un eh, ay, estuve pensando es, un, es como una, un hoyo 
sin fin. Es como, la jerga es como, es muy complicada y es por eso que me da un miedo un poquito. Pero, y también no, no quiero decir usar la jerga de un dolaje porque eso... Ah, oye, ¿qué demonios está haciendo? ¿Qué rayo fue eso? Es como, es un poco más eh, cursi, creo, eh, en, en los doblajes. Y por eso eh, 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 vuelvo a evitar a usar esa, esa jerga. Y por esa razón no, no lo uso, o no la uso mucho. Sí, una cosa que me da miedo es el hecho de, pues, eh, mirar algo que tiene... Eh, una, una, una palabra o jerga y uh -huh. cuando lo, hablo en la vida real es uh -huh. como un bochorno. No, no sé, eh, eh, creo que eso me da miedo. Mm. Sí, de hecho, no sé, hay tanta jerga en el mundo, es como... Es muy difícil. Creo que voy a aprender más de la jerga cuando estoy, tengo algunos amigos en mi día a día, que puedo, en mi día a diario, que puedo hablar con ellos y agregar eh, la jerga o conseguir la jerga de esas personas. Pero por ahora, no sé, creo que estoy satisfecho de, de no hablar así o de, you know, contento. Hacer, sí. Es muy, soy muy contento con eso. En el futuro, eh, creo que te enfocarás en usar eh, la jerga de un país específico, como, de, como mucha gente ha dicho que tienes un acento mexicano. ¿Crees mm -hmm. que eh, vas a estudiar la jerga mexicana más? Sí, creo que sí. Pero eso también depende. Por ejemplo, me gusta mucho... El acento de la Ciudad de México es, creo que es, traté de imitar ese acento, es como de la Ciudad de México, pero tan, creo que mi acento favorito es de Venezuela. No sé por qué, pero, por ejemplo, mi, mi maestro de Aitaki tiene un acento, eh, bien, eh, es de Venezuela y me encanta su acento, es como... Es muy suave, es muy relajado, pero también la, la manera que la persona habla es como, no sé, me cae muy bien su acento. No me viene a la mente el acento venezolano, pero eh, a ver, hay, hay muchos acentos que me gustan. Por ejemplo, pues eh, lo de España, eso es mm. lo que escogí porque me, me encantaba eh, la distinción, eh, el hecho de pronunciar eh, uh -huh. la C como un C, como distinción, como, uh -huh. como, casi como un TH en inglés. Uh -huh. y, eh, pues no he, no he hablado mucho en los Estados Unidos, en los Estados Unidos porque pues eh, soy más bien introvertido y no suelo eh, salir afuera y hacer cosas, así que Solo he hablado con nativos un par de veces y eh, pues la, la mayoría de mi, eh, de, ¿cómo se llama? El output ha sido por eh, escribi escribiendo eh, oraciones en línea. Así sí. que, ¿eso? Okay. Sí. De hecho, una cosa que quiero mencionar sobre su acento o sobre tu acento es que que, que te hablas como tu tono de voz es muy bueno, como eh, tu pitch de, de, tu, de tu voz es como, es muy claro o clara, creo. Eh, es muy parecido a un, una persona de España. Y no sé cómo, eh, y por eso que, de hecho, no me gusta mucho, para ser honesto, el acento de España, o okay, que hay algunos acentos de, en esa región que no, no me gustan, eh, Prefiero hablar como alguien de Latinoamérica o de Andalucía, en, de España, pero ah, no sé, porque es un poco, la, el flujo es un poco más rápido y es más como, no sé, es, un, es, un, es muy distinto que, o muy diferente de, las, de los acentos de Latinoamérica y prefiero quizás eh, como el acento venezolano 
el, el acento del sur del país de México y también de Colombia, pero del Bogotá. Creo que esos son, y también Costa Rica también. Me gusta mucho cómo hablar las personas, eh, cómo hablan las personas de Costa Rica también. Sí, no me di cuenta que hay, pues, acentos tan dramáticos de eh, pasando de eh, el norte al sur de un país, de México, ah, por ejemplo. Sí, sí. Por ejemplo, en Texas, eh, el acento mexicano que escucho en, en mi día y diario en Texas viene mayormente del norte, como es un poco del norte y también de Yucatán, es como, es muy diferente, pero el acento del sur es más como las personas hablan en un dolaje, es como mm. la mayoría de esas personas viven en ciudades cercanos de, o cercanas de, de la Ciudad de México, en el sur, y por eso esas personas hablan de, de, esa, de esa manera, es como, es muy reconocido ese acento, <coughs> pero... Uh. Gracias. Tomar un poco de agua. Yo también. Your, your accent is really good. I like how um, you seem pretty natural for only three years in. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I think um, because my accent's pretty good, pretty like natural in Esperanto too. I think I might just have a knack for it because it's like even early on, I was always able to hear. Like I got to the point where I can. <coughs> I think I swallow something or something. I feel it right here. Water. <clears throat> water, water, water. Oh. It was like a little bit of dust or something sitting there. But I was able to get to the point where I could hear different accents like pretty quick. Like maybe like a weekend. Like I could differentiate. Um, and I don't even know where people are. Like I didn't know where the accents were from. But I can like, oh, this person... These people seem to talk in this way, and these people seem to talk in this way, and these people seem to, and then I kind of like attach them to like places like Argentina, Argentina, Peru, Venezuela, Costa Rica, like um, Guatemala. Like I was able to like differentiate because I would hear enough YouTubers or enough, you know, speak a certain way. I'm like, oh, you speak like this person, this person, this person, huh? Oh, okay. And then oh, that's so they're all from Venezuela. Okay, that's how Venezuelans speak. Got you, you know. So I think I was just really good with that of just being able to hear pitch and I'm very sensitive to like hearing pinches and stuff like that. So um and then I and I, and I also just enjoy accents though. Like I enjoy imitating and you know, like I chat like I narrate to myself all the time in Esperanto or in English or Spanish or whatever, you know, and I just like I just like uh kind of practicing with like accents and things like that. It's always really fun. Have you practiced um have you put a lot of effort in your accent? Oh yeah, hundred percent. But it's always it's been like a very it's been very like easy automatic effort. Like for example, one thing I'll do that like say we even I also did this with Esperanto, I actually learned it or kind of figured it out through Esperanto, like <clears throat> I would get a sentence, right? Like say there's a sentence in a show or something like that I really like, like a cool quote or something that was like, you know, the super villain said to the to hero when he was like on his, you know, last you know, leg or something and I would get that quote and I would remember it and then I would just like repeat it to myself randomly. So I'm like using the bathroom, I'm walking, checking the mail. I would like, you know, I would like mumble to myself like the quote or like say it like, you know, whatever. Like Long with the king. Yeah, you know, yeah, stuff like so I would like practice that quote. I'm like, oh no, that's not right. Like ah da, 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 da. Uh, mm. you know, or like ah, oh. you know, so I would kind of practice with it and just have fun with it. And I would I would do stuff like that, or I would like read out loud. I would, if I struggle with a word, I'll just say a word, like, while I'm doing random stuff, like, shopping for groceries, I'll put on a mask, like, I can put it, and just, like, repeat a word, like, like, um, the word I still kind of have trouble with is, like, alrededor, 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 mm, yeah. that one still gets me, so I'll still, like, even now, I'll be, like, alrededor, 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 ah. Those R's are tricky. The LR is the tricky part for me, like, just, because I can say alrededor, alrededor, but, like, alrededor, it's, like, my brain, so I'm still trying to tweak that one, like, I think I can say it in a, anyway, I digress, but that's generally what I do, like, I just put a very minimal amount of effort, like, automatic effort, just constantly, even if I don't study Spanish, like, I don't immerse, I'll still like to practice with my accent. Yeah, um, it seems like you still have a, um, a good, a, 
a really good accent for only three years in. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what that is though, because it's, it's accents weird, right? Because even when I'm like chatting with like non natives, you know, on my Discord that are like in the English exchange server, and we're chatting in English. Someone will just randomly sound completely native. I'm just like, I'm like, bruh, how do you just sound like, how do you just sound native, dude? And he's like, I don't know, man. I've just been, you know, been learning. Like, how you long you been learning? I don't know, like five years. Like, like, but like this guy's been learning for 10 and he doesn't sound like, yeah. how do you randomly sound native? You know, it's just kind of weird, but I wish we could figure that out. Yeah. I think it's, it's all about um, diminishing returns and where you put your time in. So mm. it's like, do you spend time outputting in terms of grammar and vocabulary or, or, uh, or do you spend time only on the accent? Like, like voice shadowing. I didn't really do shadowing funny enough. I did the, what you chorusing mostly. Um, my output practice can, I'm a firm, I wouldn't say it firmly. I'm a very big proponent of when it's time for me to speak, like, Put all the books away. Don't pay attention to like, don't watch myself when I'm speaking. Just speak. Cause it's like, I did all this practice and I did all this learning in the background, like before this. So now it's like the test, right? Now it's like, now, however it comes out is however it comes out. And it's now just time for you to get used to, you know, like put your, uh, what do you, I can always say like poner en blanco, but you know, like the, to blank out or clear your mind and just, just open your mouth, you know, and just let it go. Like, I'm real big on that. So I don't watch myself. I try to make things more instinctual because, you know, one of my things of like being fluent is speaking with spontaneity. So like, I'm really big on just like, no, bro, like you should, you should get to the point where you can feel it and just flow through the conversation. Not have to worry about watching yourself like a hawk every you know time you're saying something. Um, But so that's mainly when I do an output. Um, when I'm practicing, it's it mainly consists of me practicing a word over and over or pronunciation like it took me when i was learning esperanto because you roll your r's in esperanto too it literally took me like a year to a year and a half of like constant practice to learn how to roll my r's like consistently you know like just every day i was butter 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 you know i'd have all these different things so like when i'm checking the mail i'm doing whatever i'd always practice that just consistently because it's like you don't have to like sit down at a desk and do it you just do it whenever and so that's one thing i like about output practice is just like there'll be a word i'm trying to nail or like an accent i'm trying to nail i would say it you know like if we're talking about like like pero is like one like right you have like pero you have like pero but if you say like pero it's like it's like yeah pero or there's like pero you know you know like or pero que pe, pe, pero you know like i would practice with different um emotions tied to it too so it wasn't just a word it was like what do I do when I'm happy? When I do it, I'm angry. What do I do if I'm like scared? You know, so it's, it's it's just I put a lot of like mindless, dead time output practice in that, and then speak when I speak. And if I read out, if I do read out loud, which I used to a lot, and I still do every now and again, it'll be like I read very slowly. Like, y el niño dijo al caballero que bueno si quisiera, you know, like super like si quisieras hacer eso. And you know, and nail the the speech intonation. There's nail the intonation, nail this, you know. And I go really slow, really slow. And then now every now and then I'll I'll do a paragraph. I'm like I'm gonna try to read the paragraph in just natural speech. And I'm like ooh, and I'll read a couple times natural speech, and I'll go back to reading really slow, really slow, you know. And if I like say if I, there's a sentence or something that was really weird or hard for me to say, I'll save that sentence and say it later. Practice to myself saying it later, you know. Okay, I see. Um, I've probably taken up. How long is this? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Okay, yeah, that's probably enough time that I've uh, taken up. So, is there anything else or any any last words? I shouldn't say last words. Any final thoughts uh, that you'd like to give to the viewers? Uh, find something. Right, I get it. Everyone, especially in the online learning space. Everyone's very committed on like efficiency and, you know, be quick and snappy and ease of use. Um, just find something you can anchor your language learning to, to where you will always be down 
or interested in immersing in that content, right? Screw, like, it doesn't, the dreaming Spanish is great, but I wouldn't have been able to learn Spanish if all I had to, if all, everyone only recommended me dreaming Spanish, you know what I mean? Like, what helped me was watching anime and watching, like, my, the kids' cartoons, you know, like Avatar Lives Airbender or Pokemon in Spanish. That's what helped me, ultimately. And I was able, and I always enjoy anime, and I still enjoy anime, right? So I was able to anchor my Spanish to that. So like find something you're able to anchor your Spanish to, whether it be video games or whatever, that always brings you back to the language. And that'll make things a lot easier, especially when you start feeling burnt out, you know? Great, great advice to um, consume content that you actually enjoy, that you'd consume anyway, but it's yeah. uh, just like a convenience thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 100%. Especially like I said, when you got a full-time job and you're you know doing whatever, it gets a little tricky yeah uh so thank you everyone for watching um this has been a great time um chatting chatting with you so yeah i'll see you next time that's that's such a weird ending i have no (laughs) idea how to end one of these interviews you ended it you ended it well man you just broke it though